Hi, it's me Jazzy and I'm back with another tech related video. Today I'll be taking a look at a simple electronics kit from Amazon. And this is a little Bluetooth speaker kit. So let's have a look what we get in the box. Still don't think they should let me loose with sharp objects on this channel. <laughs> right, what have we got in here? Nice little Bluetooth boombox style speaker in kit form there's a little bit of soldering required on this one so what do we have in the packet ah so these are the little speakers fantastic oh they're quite cool aren't they so i've got two of those as long as it fits together better than the component tester case then i'm happy so this is the acrylic case and looks like a bunch of components on here usb a to barrel jack there for power so this little bag looks like nuts and bolts and a little on off switch and these are all the pieces of the case which are clear acrylic with a backing paper on so we've got one little board in there and some components some leds there and some ic's there in a little bit of foam on the bottom there what else do we have we have a remote control some cable and this is the bluetooth module so this comes complete so you don't have to solder up the bluetooth module part it's just that other board that you have to solder up and then put the whole thing together so this little module deals with your bluetooth it's got an mp3 player so you can put an sd card or a usb stick in this and play your tunes from that and it's also got an fm radio this is already pre-assembled as you can see so no soldering necessary on this one it's just that other board that you have to solder together and assemble the case so this is a really simple little kit so if you're just starting to get into electronics this is the sort of thing you can use to practice your soldering make something simple and experience the joy of something working that you've put together yourself that always feels like a great accomplishment especially when you're just getting started in electronics we've got some more technical builds and we can get a bit more complicated in some future videos but this is a great one for beginners to get to grips with and not a huge amount of money either i'll put the price and the details up here and i'll put the amazon link in the video description down below in case you want to pick yourself up one of these little kits to practice your soldering on you also get instructions in the bottom of the box and they've printed them a decent size so i'm not going to need a microscope to see them this time and we've got a decent schematic that's the difference between paying a little bit more for a kit rather than a very cheap one as we've seen in previous videos so we've got all our kit we've got the instructions let's put this together right let's see what's in the bag here we've got our ic's in a little bit of foam and a whole bunch of other components leds are in little bags we've got all the resistors and diodes here and of course our little pcb ready to put together so to make things easier for myself, this time I'm using a PCB holder. This one's from Duratool. I got it from Amazon and it was about £12. And this is going to make life a lot easier. I tried last time, as you saw on the video, to use the little clips that came with the fume extractor there. But they were okay, but not brilliant. There was still a bit of movement in the board, which is not ideal when you're soldering. You need everything to be held still. This one's great because it's fully adjustable. You can adjust the width to suit your PCB and you just tighten it up on the side there. And you've got a tilt as well, which you can tighten that up there so the board doesn't tilt when you don't want it to. But that I find that's very handy because you can have the board in there, pop your components in and then flip it over and start soldering. Everyone works a little differently when they're soldering, but for me, I find this extra useful. Using the PCB holder certainly makes life a lot easier because my circuit board's not moving about all over the place like it was using the little clips that came with the fume extractor. The clips were okay, but they weren't really supportive enough. This is a lot better system. As you can see, I'm using my little component tester here just to check the values of the resistors to make sure I get them in the right places. This board seems to solder up quite nicely, no problems here. And I will say my fume extractor is doing a great job of pulling all those fumes away from me. I don't really want to be breathing those in. 
Again, I'm just double checking the values of the resistors before I'm putting them in because there was a lot of resistors with this kit. Another top tip when you're soldering up these components, it's not always immediately apparent in the instructions, especially if you're a beginner, that some components are polarized. So something like the diodes, for instance, they have a specific way round. Now it's normally marked, the diodes in this particular kit have a little black stripe on the end, and that lines up with the marking on the PCB. The other ones to watch out for, of course, are the electrolytic capacitors, which do have to go a specific way around. Now, there's normally a little marking on the side of the component that denotes the negative side, and that lines up again with the hashed section on your PCB. With the diodes, if you're not too sure which way the electricity is flowing through the component, you can use a simple test meter like this to determine which way the current's flowing, because with the diode, the current will flow through one way, but not the other. So you can determine from that which end is which. Next to go in is the IC holders. What I tend to do is put the board on a flat surface so they stay put and then just anchor the corners of them. Then I can put the board in my PCB holder and solder the rest of the pins. This just makes it a better working height for me. Now the LEDs that came with this kit are in three different colours. You get pink ones, green ones and blue ones. But the labels on the LEDs are all in Chinese. So I had to use the little component tester to put the LEDs in and see which colour they were flashing so I could work out which one was which. Once the LEDs are all soldered in, then our PCB is almost ready to be connected up to the Bluetooth module board. And there we go, there's our board ready for the ICs to be put in. Now, as I said at the start of the video, these instructions are great. Compared with what you get with the WISH kits, these are light years ahead because you can actually read it. It gives you a list of all your components and where they go, and you've got your schematic on the back there. The thing is, it gives you full instructions on how to assemble that one circuit board, but it stops there. There's no instructions anywhere included that show you how to connect the PCB that you've just soldered up to the other board that has the Bluetooth module on it, and how to wire up things like the speakers, the power jack, and the switch. Now, with a bit of logic and common sense, and referring to the pictures from the Amazon description, it's possible to work that out. But if you're a beginner, that's not that helpful. Now, here's a handy little gadget. This is an IC leg straightener tool. This one's from Spirotronics. Again, I got it from Amazon. It was about a fiver, and it's really, really handy bit of kit. Sometimes when you get your ICs in these kits, and they come in these little pieces of foam, the legs are not always quite straight, and they're really difficult to get in the sockets if the legs are not perfectly straight. It's also a risk of damaging your IC, which you don't want to do. This is a really simple device. You've got two sides to it. These are for your smaller ICs, and these are for the larger ones. And literally, all you do is you pop your IC in there, press it together. It makes sure all your legs are completely square. That makes your IC so much easier to put in the socket. It's just a nice little gadget that makes life that bit easier when you're dealing with ICs. This little gadget is really great because it makes putting the ICs in the sockets a breeze. They're all going in nice and square. There we go. Perfect. Now the rest of the assembly. Now this is the part that we didn't have the instructions for, so it's not immediately obvious, but you just solder your wires onto your speakers. They've already got connectors on the ends go into the Bluetooth module board. You can see me checking on my phone there the Amazon listing to see how the unit went together because there were no instructions with it on the assembly. All the components go into the acrylic case and I'm giving the unit a test there before we put the case together in case there is anything that needs adjustment but fortunately this unit did work quite nicely. The case goes together quite well. It uses little nuts and bolts to hold the sides together. It's a little bit fiddly getting those nuts and bolts in. With a small screwdriver and holding the nut in place, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit fiddly, but it does hold the case together a whole lot better than the one we had for the signal generator. If you fancy having a go at one of these kits, these are great for beginners. If you're just getting into electronics or you just want to practice your soldering or you're getting back into it after years and years, I think these little kits are a great little way to put something together and practice your soldering skills. And it's always nice to see something that you've soldered together up and running. And there we have it. Let's give it a quick test. All working there, Bluetooth connects and the LEDs light up. So now our little kit's finished. 
there was a couple of things that weren't very obvious in the instructions. So there's three connections on this Bluetooth module here. So the red one's your power connection, which goes to your barrel jack and your switch on the back there. And the two white ones are for your speakers there. Now there is an indication on the speaker terminals when you solder your wires on, there is a plus and minus that you can look for there. The only thing that wasn't really apparent from any of the instructions is where you connect your PCB that you've soldered, which is in the bottom there, to this Bluetooth module here. So I've just run the two wires to the ground and the 5 volt rail on there, which seems to have done the job quite nicely. The other thing I did find, unfortunately with this one, if you're going to take on one of these kits, this switch was extremely tight to the point where it's actually cracked the plastic there from me putting it in. Tried my best to get it in carefully without cracking the plastic. I'd suggest if I was going to do a similar one to just maybe run a little needle file around the inside of the opening. Seems to be just the top and the bottom. It was just that little bit tight. It, no matter how careful I was to try and get it in square and push the little pressure points in, it did actually crack the plastic, unfortunately. Uh, but for me, it's not too visible, and it's on the back, and it still looks pretty cool. So I'm still happy with it. The other thing to look out for is when you're assembling the case, you've got these little screws which hold the case together, which can be a little bit fiddly, but once you've got them together, actually, I will say this case does hold together a lot better than any of the ones that I got from Wish. So it's assembled, it's tested, so let's try out some of the functions. It's powered off a USB. Now, a little switch on the back there. There we go. And we've got some life. That's definitely working. Okay, that's telling me it wants to connect to the Bluetooth. So let me have a quick look. Okay, let's go for a bit of crab rave, shall we? Of course, why not? What else would we test it with? There we go. So you've got the little LEDs in the bottom that flash like an old sort of spectrum analyzer style. Okay, you've got your remote control there so you can adjust your volume up and down. Give it a bit of volume. Oh, there we go. Hey, that's not half bad, is it? I've got to say, that's actually not bad. It's better sound than I was hoping for. When I first tested it, the sound was nowhere near that good. So I think having the speakers in the enclosure definitely makes quite the difference. So you've got your little modes that you can change with the buttons on the front there, or you can use your little remote that comes with it to change the mode. So the Bluetooth we've tried, we know that works. There's your FM radio, that works. It does say in the instructions it should come with a little bit of wire for the FM aerial, which I didn't find in my kit. So I just substituted a spare piece that I had just to make a little FM aerial. And it does pick up some FM stations quite nicely. You've got your 3.5mm aux jack on the front there if you want to plug in some sort of external player. It will also read an SD card and a USB as well. Let's try a USB stick and see what happens, shall we? There we go. So there you go. I formatted mine to FAT32 and it worked on there. Your mileage may vary depending on how your USB key is formatted. So there we go. It all works. It's a nice little kit. It's all together. It also picks up your voice. It's got a little microphone in it. As you can see, it's picking up my voice and that activates the little LEDs as well. I'd say in conclusion, it's a nice little kit. It went together a bit easier than the Wish ones. The instructions are better and the fit of the components is better. There was no problems getting the board soldered up. All the components were there and it went together very nicely. The only points to note really on this one are the lack of instructions for assembling the rest of the kit beyond soldering up your PCB and the fact that the switch is a bit of a tight fit. Maybe that was just my particular product. Your mileage may vary, but I'd say if you find the switch is a bit tight, rather than trying to force it in like I did, I know these things happen. If you feel like it's a bit tight, I would just give it a little file down first before you try and pop the switch in. Other than that, I would say it goes together nicely. It functions as it should. The Bluetooth works, the USB, the FM radio, nice little kit. 
looks quite cool as well with the LEDs and it was quite nice to put together. We'll be looking at some more simple electronics kits in future videos. We've also got some more complex stuff as well coming up. So whether you're just starting electronics or you're getting back into it, these little kits are a really great way of just getting some soldering practice in and learning how they all go together. I've also been putting together the oscilloscope kit from Wish and that will be getting featured in a future video as well. That's a slightly more complex assembly on that one. And we've got a lot of things that we can test on it as well. As always, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the videos, please do hit the like and subscribe button. It's always much appreciated. And big thanks to everyone that's subscribed to my channel so far. Loads more electronics content coming up. We've got more retro computing. We've got more electronics kits, we've got some electronics repairs, and we've also got some Pokemon content on the way as well if you're into that. So stay tuned, as they say, and I will catch you on the next one.